Here's how I analyze the level of destruction caused by the ongoing wildfires in Los Angeles, California using satellite imagery. First, I check the availability of satellite imagery of both Landsat and Sentinel. And I found that Sentinel has acquired an image on 12th of January 2025 covering this area of California. And I downloaded that. You can download these satellite images completely for free. And when you download it, you don't really get just one image, but instead what you get is just a bunch of different spectral bands corresponding to various electromagnetic wavelengths. And this includes the three visible red, green and blue bands as well, and a bunch of other wavelengths beyond the visible spectrum. Now, if I take the red, green and blue band data files from Sentinel and simply plug them in the red, green and blue channels in a GIS software like QGIS, I would be able to generate a natural color image corresponding to this particular date like this, which is nothing but how we are used to seeing satellite images more commonly through things like aerial shots, drone images and that sort of thing. Now, just from this satellite image alone, you quite possibly can see a massive area right around here, which appears to have been subjected to these devastating wildfires. But to make a proper comparison, I would actually need to have another image before the fire event occurred to compare this with. So I went back to the Copernicus data space hub, searched for an image from a couple of months before this event occurred, and I was able to find this image right here which is from 19th October, and we can safely assume that by that time, none of these fire events had occurred. So I went ahead and downloaded this product as well, brought it over to QGIS and tied the corresponding bands to the right channels. And this is what I was able to see as the true color image from the 19th of October, 2024. So immediately guys, you can notice the extent of the damage just by visually inspecting these two satellite images. Now I'm going to take a step further because checking the extent of the damage just visually using natural color images might not be the most optimum way of noticing the differences. So in this next step, we start comparing what we call the false color composites. Well, you might wonder what exactly is a false color composite. Now, I mentioned that Sentinel data consists of a number of different spectral bands. And out of these, there is this band called near infrared, commonly denoted as NIR. Now, areas with healthy green vegetation reflect quite a lot of this near infrared wavelength light, which is what the satellite sensors happen to capture as well. And on the other hand, healthy vegetation, due to its high chlorophyll content, tends to absorb a lot of red light and it reflects back only just a fraction. Now we can actually make use of this property to do something quite interesting. We know as humans, we only can see the wavelengths that are within the visible spectrum, which we identify as different colors. But if there is a way to take this near infrared band of Sentinel that captures this near infrared light that gets reflected off of the Earth's surface and channel it through some color band that we can have some form of a perception of, then we could easily identify areas where green vegetation can be assumed to be predominant, isn't it? And that's exactly what we do with false color composites. What we do is we take the near infrared, red and green bands and channel them through red, green and blue using a software like QGIS. And this way, if there is a certain area that reflects quite a lot of near infrared light, that area will be highlighted in red. And that's the reason why we call this a false color composite, because in reality, we cannot see near infrared light. But what we do is we take that corresponding band and channel it through red so that areas where near infrared light has been predominantly captured is going to just shine bright in red. And that's exactly what I've done right over here. This is the false color composite image pertaining to 19th September 2024. And all of these areas where you can see very bright green can actually be attributed to vegetation. And typically in this kind of false color composites, you'll see the urban areas appearing in cyan, gray or bluish white shades. And it goes without saying that the water bodies are obviously appearing in black or dark blue. 
Now, if I take the Sentinel data corresponding to 12th January 2025 and run them through the same set of channels, this is actually what you're going to see. Now you can see an entire patch right over here covering all these places such as Rustic Canyon, Pacific Palisades, Topanga Beach, Big Rock and Eastern Malibu. Everything seems to be completely gone. And guys, with that, you can quite clearly see the extent of the damage in terms of a spatial context. If I were to just take a tool like area measuring tool and if I switch the units to something like acres, I would roughly be able to calculate the extent of the damage, which as of 12th January appears to be roughly around 28,775 acres. And guys, at the same time, you probably might notice such a patch right at this point as well. And if you manage to identify where this location happens to be, this is nothing but the Altadena area, which is also another area that's affected by this uh, ongoing fire. If I just quickly turn this off and use Google Maps, you can see that this area is Altadena area. And we are going to take our analysis a step further. And now we are going to make use of our remote sensing data and look at a particular index called normalized burn ratio. Now this is an index that's designed to highlight uh, burnt areas in large fire zones as it states right over here. And there's actually an equation that can be used to calculate this normalized burn ratio. And it makes use of the near infrared band that we just discussed about. And in addition to that, it also makes use of another band called short wave infrared band, which in Sentinel happens to be the band number 12. So for this analysis, we are going to make use of band number 12 and band number 8. And when I apply the NBR equation, making use of these two bands, this is what I would get as the corresponding index for 19th of October 2024, which was way before the fire. And if I do the same calculation using the satellite data set corresponding to 12th January 2025, this is what you would get to see. And based on these two outputs, what we can do is we can actually calculate what's called the burn severity. And that's nothing but just the difference between these two outputs. So we calculate the pre-fire NBR and then we calculate the post-fire NBR and then we just take the difference between the two. And look guys, this is what happens when I take the difference between these two. We get an output like this. Now, after adjusting the value classifications just a bit, we actually end up with something like this. And this is what I have produced as the final image, which actually shows us the burn severity. Areas with red color are considered to have the highest severity and areas with orange color can be considered to have a moderate to high severity and so on if you were to include the other parts of the classification as well. And from this output, you again can see that sharp boundary which we actually got to see through the false color composite as well. And you can see that it clearly highlights a couple of spots, but out of those, these two are the predominant ones, the one right next to Pacific Palisades and the area that's even currently burning right now, right next to Altadena. And if you actually zoom in, you can see how accurate this kind of an output can be because you can see that this burn severity output is actually only limited to these areas where vegetation is present, but it doesn't really cover any of these areas like this, which are just plain open lands and quite potentially haven't really been subjected to any burning. And this is how I analyze the spatial extents of the damage of the fires in Los Angeles using Sentinel satellite data. And the unfortunate thing is just because of the sheer intensity and vastness of this wildfire event, they actually haven't been able to fully contain it yet. And it's burning through Los Angeles even as we speak right now.